Hello and welcome to the Flix Forum podcast, where each episode, each episode, we go back and we look at a Netflix original film in the order of release. This is our fourth day of Podmas, where we're putting out an episode every day in the lead up to Christmas. So our episode today is Netflix 272nd film from 2020. It's the German superhero film, Freaks, You're One of Us, or in German, Freaks, the Bist Dein Wohnungs. It's directed by Felix Binder and stars Finlay Berger, Thelma Bulbang, and Giza Flake. I'm Jesse. I'm here solo. German. Not very good. That's <laughs> all so we'll start off with. Uh, another superhero film. feel like we've had a few of these recently. Uh, as always, if you wanted to check this one out, give us a pause. Come back a little bit later on because we will spoil this as we go. So let's kick it off with the Fast Flicks where we do a summary of what it's all about. So this one's about a group of individuals who are medicated, suppressing their power. Will they break free and reveal themselves to the world? Question mark. I don't know. What do you reckon? We'll find out. Uh, yeah, there's not much about this one. Unfortunately, with uh, a few of the international films, it's hard to find anything out about the film. So this one, um, what I could see, it pays homage to the 1932 film called Freaks. Also, the 2018 film of the same name, Freaks 2. So um, a little bit of a um, taking the ideas from those films as well, I guess. This does feature the Willem scream. Um, about 20 minutes in, Wendy stops uh, taking her pills. She defends herself of group against this group of attackers. First class, she punches, flies backwards, and lets out that famous scream. So if you don't know what the Willem scream is, uh, give it a look because it's in quite a lot of films. Uh, this does have a post credit scene too. Won't spoil that now, but um, post credit scene uh, in regards to Wendy's son. So hang around after the credits to see that one as well. Around the world, what's this one called? In French, it's called The Phenomenons. Interesting. In Hungarian, it's called Monster Born, You're One of Us. In Japanese, it's called Mum is a Social Hero. I think it's meant to say superhero, but uh, I like that title. In Turkish, it's called Abnormal Heroes. And in Vietnamese, it's called Superpowers in Each of Us. So um, yeah, nice little translations around the world for this one. This did hit Netflix on the 2nd of September, 2020. What are the critics and audiences saying about this film that was filmed in and around Berlin in Germany? So Rotten Tomatoes sits at zero percent on five reviews so very rotten the audience 27 percent, so i guess it's higher and that's more than 50 ratings imdb it's a little bit higher again sits at a 5.4 out of 10 on 6,700 ratings letterboxd 2.3 out of 5 on three and a half thousand ratings but it's been logged by nearly 5,000 people so uh, overall not a lot of positive stuff to say about this film what do i think about it um like i said two superhero films in a row uh, I might be the odd one out on this one, but I enjoyed this a lot more than yesterday's uh, one called Unknown Origins. I mean, it does have some ordinary bits, but I was engaged the whole way through, so um, not too negative for me on this one. Let, let's talk about some characters. So Wendy, she's our main main character here. So she lives this boring life. Um, she flips like meat chops um, for work, struggles financially. Her husband, Lars, he seems super supportive of, of her and their son, Carl. But Wendy, she's been medicated throughout her whole life to sort of suppress these powers, these superpowers that she's got. And, and her power is, um, she's got extreme strength, I guess. So, you know, she gets pushed around at work by her boss. Male creeps in the street annoy her. There's customers who do the wrong thing at work. They park in like disabled or handicapped car parks. They all walk all over her. Um, and it's sad because she wants the best for her son. And, and maybe that idea of, of um, allowing that suppression to go will allow her to live a better life. So that, that's that question of this film, I guess. Um, the other character, Alma, um, he's this co-worker of Wendy. He works at this um, meat chop joint, like a diner or takeaway place. This, he's, a, he's a lot younger. Um, he struggles with ambition. He's got this dad who's got super high expectations of him. Um, however, he doesn't respect his dad due to his, his money choices and his choice in women and replacing his own mother. So he sort of secludes himself. He likes to read comics. He's got some weird affections for Wendy, I guess, which, which who seems way too old for him. Um, and, and he finds out too that he, he's got a suppressed power himself, which is the use of electricity. So we've got Wendy, who's got the super strength. He's got the uh, electricity. And our third sort of person, I guess, that joins in on this uh, crew is Marek. He's this uh, homeless man who sort of approaches Wendy... Um, to sort of highlight to her the powers that she has. So his uh, power is, is invincibility. Nothing can stop him or kill him. So these three guys together, if they team up, what could they do to the world, I guess, is a question we could ask. Um, the only other character is Dr. Stern. She's this doctor who's in charge of obviously overseeing or making sure anyone with powers is sort of suppressed. Um, she's got to make sure that they stay medicated, live that normal life. Um, and she's obviously got a lot of people working for herself too. 
the, it's not really mentioned, but I'm guessing she works for the government and this is government suppression as well. Um, the director, Felix Binder, German, got 12 directing credits, all in German, nothing I've heard of. I mean, so, you know, we've just got to take it how it is, I guess, um, and, and we'll do that through the scenes. What are some things that I liked in this? What are some things that I didn't necessarily like? So the opening, I think the opening was good. Um, we see this destroyed school, there's this hole in the wall, there's a kid who we find out's Wendy, she's sort of hiding. And then this really cool transition from the back of the kid's head to the older version of Wendy sort of sitting in bed taking pills. Um, sort of set everything up and it was engaging enough for the film. So I liked that. I think uh, Wendy, there's a stage where she uses her power. And I sort of mentioned this before where the Willem scream was. But she uses her power to, to fight against these creepy dudes. Just throwing them around. That was cool use of effects. Um, Wendy stands up to her boss. That's a really good moment in, in her workplace. Wendy plays soccer or football with her son um, and just kicks the ball, just goes miles. That was cool. Uh, another moment of Wendy using her power, she's trying to break into Dr. Stern's office by sort of flying up the side of this tall skyscraper building and just sort of falls for the first time. That was funny. Uh, Wendy bends the bikes of the kids that are picking on her sons. That's another good moment. So, you know, these positive moments when she uses her power. Uh, and finally, too, um, Electro using his powers. One moment I didn't mind it. He used it to sort of, um, he's sitting in... in the house in the lounge room with his dad's new girlfriend and you know he really doesn't like her so he plays music that was his mum's favorite music through the electricity and flickers the lights and scares her off so i thought that was a, that was a really cool use there but the rest of the things i didn't like pretty much all revolve around electro or elmer um there's a scene where elmer's in his room sort of listening to his dad having sex and then the dad just walks in all sweaty like i don't know what that added that was just gross elmer masturbates to a comic and then wendy just rocks up at the window and says oh sorry for interrupting <laughs> like and then this is followed up later where Wendy makes a joke about him sort of masturbating to her. It just felt off and gross. Um, Elma, like I mentioned before, is a lot younger than Wendy, but there's a moment where he goes for a kiss and like, you know, seriously, she's 30 years older than him. And then she sort of just smiles back, not like pushing him away. Like I'm married, I've got a kid, I've got a husband, I'm happy. That was weird. Elma, again, he, he's sort of... Um, evil mode and there's a moment where you know there's some people in, that are passing by on the road that sort of laugh at his outfit that he's got on and then he decides to use his electric power to change the traffic lights so they all crash and die i didn't like we already know he's a bad character i didn't need that as well elma um sort of loses at the hospital and sort of causes some fatalities that were pretty bad which really upset wendy and she had to pull over in the car and vomit and then you know his response to her is oh you're vomiting are you pregnant like, come on, like, what a horrible line. Um, and finally, the whole Elmer with his dad, you know, I get that they had a trouble with some relationship, but then we finish it off with, you know, um, he talks to his dad and says, when was the last time you hugged me? And then they hug, and then he zaps him and almost kills him. And then Wendy walks in, and he tries to, like, sort of force himself on her for a kiss, and she doesn't want it, so he zaps her as well. Just a really poor character, I think. Um, themes, ideas. What was this film saying? I think, um, you know, the idea of accepting difference and, and that idea of segregation, making sure you don't segregate, you don't suppress, you don't need to medicate just for the sake of it. It's almost like, you know, don't try and push mental illness to the side, you know, highlight it, focus it, let, let's work on it together. Um, that idea too of being yourself, we're all powerful in some way. You just got, the, got to have that opportunity to be yourself, the, the morals or the rights of power. Um, you know, slightly touched on through Wendy not wanting people to die or be hurt, but, you know, if you do have power, what sort of morals do you need to follow to make sure that you uphold the right thing? Um, and success too. You know, success can be found at times with change, doing something with your life, um, but doing the right thing. And that leads into the idea of family, making your own family if needed, but also acknowledging your own and, and being respectful to everyone involved. Um, what I take away from this one? I think... In the last couple of, of episodes, we've had Project Power, we've had, had Unknown Origins, and now this as well, all super closely released together. I feel like Netflix, you've got these three movies about powers or, or superheroes or comic books, and I feel like Netflix should have spaced these out a little bit more um, because they did feel very close together. But, but I guess most people aren't watching every Netflix original film in the order of release, uh, so it probably would make it fine for people just jumping in and, and searching for these films. I did enjoy the soundtrack from this one too. There's there some good references um, to music in here too. Um, all right, I think I'm ready to wrap it up. We give the film a rating out of five. For me, I, I mean, you know, the 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 good people, a good character in this film are good, given good stuff to work with, whereas the villains or the bad people in this film are given really poor stuff to work with. So that really made it a bit of a struggle. But I, like, I was still interested. I still wanted to see where it goes. I was still intrigued with the characters. It was just um, the villain that, that was really poor, I think. Like the idea of Elmer just being so young, and I get that idea. Young people don't know how to use power properly, but 
there was no need to have a love connection between him and Wendy, who's you know, 20, 30 years older than him. That was just weird. Um, I was still interested where I was going. I'm giving this a two and a half out of five. A little bit better than yesterday's one for me. We're on socials. We've got Facebook, Instagram, and X, formerly known as Twitter. Question I wanted to put on there for, for this episode. How could people with powers be used to improve the world rather than suppressed? So, you know, if you've got strength, what can you do to use those powers, allow them to be themselves, but make sure they don't overuse those powers, you know, help build lift large buildings, move, I don't know, move mountains almost. Um, yeah, I don't know. Just something I, I thought was pondering a little bit. Um, we're back tomorrow. Back again tomorrow. Tomorrow we've got another 2020 film. It's a romantic comedy called Love Guaranteed. This one's directed by Mark Stephen Johnson, stars Rachel Lee Cook and Damon Wayans Jr. So mixing up a bit. Um, English film, I'm guessing, for tomorrow. That's what we'll have tomorrow. So as always, thanks for listening to this one and hopefully I'll see you again tomorrow.